Hello, and welcome back to the definitive Starship Review series without access to a proper table, where I know what you're all thinking. It has been so long in all this time since my last double. I mean, the last video I uploaded, David Tennant had just become the doctor. Like, come on. That was so long ago. My, my brother, my youngest brother hadn't even been born yet, and he's about to graduate. Oh god, that's true. Uh, but yeah, in all that time, like, I still don't have access to a proper table, but look, it's... Proper table, like, if I ever got a proper table, everyone would die. Oh god, they would... You, look, you, you just, you don't, you don't want to know, but suffice it to say, today, we are going to be looking at the XL USS Stargazer from Eagle Moss, because the people who voted in my community poll are a bunch of normies. But yes, uh, there's probably a subset of you in the audience who are going, hang on, XL Eagle Moss Stargazer, they never made one, um... You're half right. For those of you who don't know, the reason there hasn't been a video in six months, I know we went through four doctors in six months, and my, my brother really was on the fast track to graduation. Eagle Moss went bankrupt, and so they, we stopped getting new models. I think the Cerritos, or like the Titan, was one of the last new ones. I don't remember what it was. No, it was something in the Universe Collection. Whatever. Um, but... Eagle Moss stays a few months ahead, right? They're, they are a few months ahead in production. So they actually did make a USS Stargazer. They announced it. I think you could even pre-order it. And then they went bankrupt. But uh, the company Master Replicas has bought the rights to the existing Eagle Moss stock. They're not making new models. But it means that you can buy... Well, actually, you can't buy this one unless you want to play a scalper hundreds of dollars. Like, seriously, if I sold my collection, I could probably afford a down payment on a house. But the, that's genuinely probably true. I've um, done the math. But this... Well, I forgot. I've always lost my train of thought. <laughs> but yeah, every week or two weeks, whatever, they sell off a bit of the stock, and this was one you could buy. So today, we are going to be looking at the USS Stargazer from Eagle Moss. <laughs> and I also just want to say that previously I had like an affiliate thing with Eagle Moss. Uh, Master Replicas is not involved in this at all. I could say whatever I wanted before, but now I can say whatever I want and Eagle, uh, Master Replicas would wish they signed a contract. <laughs> but no, um, I mean the Stargazer, I've probably reviewed it more than most ships on my channel. It is the original for turbo thank you very much but yeah i don't usually go for the four turbos or the three turbos you know like i'm a two turbo kind of gal i didn't know what pronoun was going to come out until it came out but y you know the stargazer is actually one of the exceptions it's one of the few four turbos that i'm I'm into. I really like it. And somehow, despite, as you can see, having already owned a Stargazer, I think this elevates my appreciation for the ship even more. Like, I knew, I'd seen pictures, I knew this was gonna be a pretty good model. Um, you know, I was actually on the fence when Eagle Moss was in production on how quickly I'd get it. Um, no, that's a lie. I did these videos. But <laughs> otherwise, I probably would have been a bit on the fence. Um, but I think this this is fantastic. Um, I think it's got the same sort of thing that the Equinox did, the XL Equinox, where it's a smaller ship, um, the Stargazer itself, you know, in the grand scheme of Star Trek. So that motion picture, they weren't too big. Um, if you kind of look, you know, your, your Enterprise A, assuming these saucer sections are pretty much the same size, which, let's face it, they're probably the same saucer section, the Constellation class is a little smaller. It's maybe, I don't know, yay big compared to a, a Constitution. Um, and so th this is nice, you know, I like my Constitution class, but I think that puts it at just about the right scale, where at this XL, probably like eight or nine inches, all the detail is there. Like, you're not losing any detail that's like too small with something like the Enterprise E, which is of course huge, but also this eight or nine inches. Um, 
And at the same time, I think the model has managed to capture all that detail. Like, you know, I don't have a, a stargazer picture right next to me, but I think what's probably like the more most important thing, especially at this price range, is I look at this, I'm like, yeah, this is the stargazer. This is what the stargazer looks like. This is correct. And even if I were to know some things are off, uh, we'll get to that. I'm like, yeah, this is the Stargazer. And I, I had a beautiful moment when I put it on my desk, like on the stand for the first time. And I set it down. And I went, oh, my God, the, this is a captain's office. Like, was it Cisco who had a, a Stargazer um, or at least a constellation? Picard did, but it was yellow. But I, I sat back and it looked like I had plucked it off of the set of a captain's room from like those 80s treks and this was just the model like cisco i know as a, a daedalus class um i'm pretty sure cisco actually has the yellow stargazer from picard's room but they painted it he's got a studio model of the nebula but i, I felt like i'd picked some that stuff off and had plunked it on my desk more than ever which is weird because some of these models are actually studio models from captain's rooms nowadays. I can see one. I see you, Columbia class refit. But suffice it to say, of course, I am very happy with this ship. Uh, shall we get into some of the close-ups? Um, yeah, it's a lovely motion picture hull. Um, I'm pretty sure it's actually the Enterprise uh, hull like here and then they've tacked on this extra rim um if i just kind of compare the sizes and i've actually seen the little rcs triangles right there that i'm making touch i think those like they're also there if you look you got these big ones that i think are actually you know the stargaze rcs but then also these smaller things that i think are the rcs from the uh, constitution class and yeah look this is the impulse array i've never noticed that but i i like that um it's kind of, I think, a shuttle bay. Like, you've taken your Constellation class. I've just realized you've screwed up the windows. But um, you've attached on, essentially, a circular shuttle bay. Or, you know, probably some other stuff in there. But I, I really like that as a design, as a kit bash. Because this is a kit bash, of course. It's the Constellation class. It, I think they used two Constellation classes for the nacelles and the impulse crystals. And, like, a an excelsior or something i don't remember how they did these kit bashes but th that's how they used to make these studio models is they would literally buy kits like something like this from the store uh, although usually i think it was like assembly kits and they would just <laughs> literally glue those parts together from different kits it was kit bashing and they nowadays it's digital but hey they still do it but i mean it it's a solid it's a great bridge you know the right level of aztecing that beautiful shade of right uh, the model isn't pearlescence but you know it captures the effect come to think of it i don't think the stargazer is pearlescence i think that's just the uh, enterprise refit but you know plenty of the red pinstriping to keep it interesting knights of let's le 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 Lots of nice detail on the uh, windowing, of course, the bridge, which is different to um, my Enterprise A, but I also know people complain this model is really inaccurate, so who knows? I think this one looks a bit better. It, it's, it's not exactly the Constitution class. Um, the Constitution class, I always love, it, it goes in a bit before that big bulge, and the Constellation is very much just a bulge. It, it does not go in. And I've, I've actually just realized, is it two tops? Uh, no, that's a bottom one. It, it is a bottom, but I like how it looks like there's just an upside down bridge and the right side up bridge. And of course, I always love this uh, gold paint. I don't think it's Eagle Moss's gold paint, uh, but it's the it's a nice bronzy effect and it looks really good. It, it works with the TMP white. Uh, the bottom, again, just some little greeblies. I mean, it's the motion picture, so little greeblies. Uh, but, you know, they actually do feel quite odd. You've got your sensor gun, which looks like a gun, but is actually sensors. And I do know someone pointed out, um, ignore my Stargazer, by the way, the Lego World map, uh, because I no longer spend Eagle Moss money, uh, fell on my motion picture collection. It's shockingly all right but the stands didn't survive. Um, yeah, 
these guns are on different size, these sensor guns. And I believe uh, the small one is the correct one. But that is weird. Plus, I just noticed the pinstriping is blue on the small one. I mean, I think this was, like, in the first dozen issues or something, so it might not be as accurate. I mean, blue nacelles, black nacelles, we'll get to those. But you'll also notice no registry on the bottom of this uh, Stargazer. Again, I don't know if that's correct or not. I think I've read that the um, small one is correct, and it's got some extra little detailing on the side uh, that I assume is actually there, but has been scaled up on the Stargazer. So you don't really get it here, because, like... That's where the RCS thruster would be. Maybe that's why they're trying to model. Uh, same on the top. Actually, no. The On the top, these little slits do correspond to these bronze gold slits. So, yes, I do believe that's what they're going for. But you can see, of course, this is just a tiny little bit more detailed. On here, it's three little dots. On here, there's actually sciency stuff going on. That's what we'll call it. Uh, no bump on the bottom. This actually is a lot less detailed on the bottom if we are assuming that the small stargazer is correct. And yeah, not no detailing on there. But again, I think it's the point where if I put it side by side, like if this is correct and this isn't, then yeah, you, you can see some of the differences if you look. But I I put it down and I look at it and I'm like, yep, that's the stargazer. I, I also suspect that this is quite detailed. This is, I think, unusually detailed. Um, you know, this as well, like the whole, uh, nacelle structuring is a little overly detailed. And if the price is that the bottom specifically is a little under detailed, I mean, point out those flaws to me, you know, I, I can live with that. And the rim I love, uh, I don't actually know what these are. I would have thought they were shuttle bays. Um, that, yeah, makes it look a lot more like shuttle bays if... Is it's like the Miranda that had the blue doors, um, which this does have on the front. I like, yeah, that that's the same style here. The light catches better upside down. It's not graded. Oh, nope, I stand corrected. It is very slightly graded. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but uh, you you can hear it. <laughs> there we go, graded. Actually, yeah, I've took closer looks, rubbed my fingers on some stuff, and these are all graded. So I assume. It is a crazy amount of shuttle bay doors. Uh, actually, kind of absurd. Maybe someone in the comments will be like, oh, I have the technical manual, and it's it's not that at all. Like, look at that. That's Is that six decks? Four, five, six decks? And that's, that's those are massive shuttle bays, but I, I, I like, conceptually, I do like that you've just tacked a shuttle bay on the back of it. I mean, wh what are you going to do? You've just lost your secondary hull. Like, that's a huge chunk. In fact, looking at it, if you kind of squish this secondary hull to the size of the saucer, uh, wrap it around the Enterprise A, it'd probably look like this, about space-wise. Uh, I mean, you got this stuff as well. This is livable, but yeah, <laughs> I've just seen it. Why'd I turn it upside down? It's symmetrical. But if you look at this, um, the strut, you really get Enterprise neck section. <laughs> like, ah, oh, kit bashes. I, I usually don't really like them, but this one kit bashes right. Next up, the turbos, of course, as they are known on this channel. Uh, if you haven't watched a video since the last Eagle Moss review, that one might have slipped you by. But these are called turbos. There are four of them. You're welcome. Um, yeah, as I said, I think what why I like this ship in it, why it works for me when other four turbos ones don't. I, I'd actually, I have to look at the Picard Stargazer one does this. Um, the turbos are sideways. So, like, the ship flies like this, but turbo-wise, the ship flies like this. And so, you keep a lot of the rules. You keep a lot of the nacelle rules. These can't see each other. There's a big thing in the way, but that's not how they're pointed. These see each other, these see each other. Even then, these have like a good amount of seeing each other. Um, it's very redundant in like a technical sense. Like you've got two impulse crystals. You've got all the same gizmos up here and down here. Um, you've got the separate strut. It feels like if two of these failed, it could still keep going. And so it's more like a 
a tuna cell system operating a, in tandem or like as a backup to a different system, I realize if the top half were to fail, I'm saying that this and this are working together. So it's still broken. But, you know, it, it's more of a conceptual thing. It's like that little bit to tip it over the edge. And I don't know, maybe I just like the motion picture era better. It's not my favorite era, um, even before D Discovery Season 3, but it's a very, very nice-looking era. Tell you what, though, holding this, like seeing my Enterprise A off on the sidelines, um, it it's very hard to say that this isn't my favorite era. These are gorgeous ships. This one is... Uh, the aztec is kind of harsh on the Enterprise A. It's, it's kind of... Um, obvious but this is right this is subtle it's it's not even really aztec until you look at it but it stops the white from being just bland white nothing but going on to themselves yeah just a bunch of random little greeblies up here uh which if you don't know is the name for random detailing on uh i think specifically starships it might be a general term but i think it is starships um where, or at least that's what you usually hear it, that just make it look interesting, but don't actually have any purpose besides making the design interesting. Impulse crystals. As I've already said, impulse, how does it work? What does the crystal do? Nobody knows. Um, and the black nacelles, which are screen accurate. Very nice. I mean, I... It's funny, because I feel like I didn't like the black nacelles as much on screen, but holding the model here, you know, under the light and everything, it, it doesn't let light through. These nacelles do not glow, which is screen accurate, of course. If we compare it to even the, the A, which not even backlighting it, it still has like a blue glow. Um, it, it, it works. It works when you're actually holding it, you're real. If it was blue, like, I don't know, this one, it it'd be like yeah that's a that's a model that's like a toy of the stargazer but it's not you know totally accurate this that's i think what really makes this model feel accurate even in the little bits where it might not necessarily be accurate i also do love uh the markings on the nacelle and cc yeah just two of them god i'm out of practice uh 2893 did you like how i was stealthily going to check the registry on the saucer section and ended up very obviously moving the model so you couldn't read the registry. United Federation of Planets and of course United Federation of Planets big old lovely red deltas uh, which is the TNG com badge isn't it? That's always confused me a bit. I mean I guess the TNG com badge is this logo but hey it, it's weird retrospectively. Retroactively same thing. Next up, uh, can I get a good look in there? Yeah, I do like that the necks, we'll, we'll call them necks, um, are quite lived in. I don't know, those windows, they're all black, which I think just makes them visible because it's, it's probably going to be very shaded. I mean, I have a light source there, there, and there, and it's still shaded. But yeah, c compared to the saucers, which work when it's head on, you see it. But otherwise, the white light is practically invisible. And yeah, not much going on on the back. A little bit of Greeblies, because, you know, it's the 70s. We're learning about Greeblies. Star Wars has come out. The Millennium Falcon, the King of Greeblies, does exist. But yeah, I've, I think I've probably said as much about this ship as I want. I love the Stargazer, uh, specifically this one. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to check. Yes, I bet that's it. If this looks bad, I'll put an image up on screen. But the Picard Stargazer has the turbos um, like a normal starship would, which I think is detracting from it. I might I might try and Photoshop something and put them sideways. It won't look good, but uh, hey, we might learn some things. Um, but yeah, I, I, that, that was a wise decision, making the turbos sideways on this starship. But... I I think I've probably said all I have to say about this ship. I mean, it's a gorgeous model. Um, it if you think you'd be interested in it, if you like the Stargazer, it might actually be worth the scalper prices. Um, I mean, I don't I don't know if you not want to wait on it. Um, you know, I I wasn't gonna review these to buy, but I mean, it's it's probably up there with the one of the best XLs. I mean, I'd have to compare them all to really say, but this is a top-tier Eagle Moss model.
And it definitely improves upon the original, I think, with the blue pinstriping. I'm going to laugh if that's accurate, but it really doesn't... It doesn't look it. It doesn't feel motion picture-y. Also, uh, 2472 AC. Why is it C? I know for a fact this only ever had one production run. I once emailed Eomas how to read these codes. Like, this is just a number that counts up, I assume. But what's AC? Like, the first version, the third production? And I, I, I emailed them, uh, basically saying just that. And, like, f six months later or something crazy, I got a response back, and they were like, Hi, thanks. Um, that code is how, basically, it's just a model registration code that helps us keep track of the ships. I'm like, yes, that's what I said in my email. <laughs> but anyway, it's forever a mystery, just like what happens if I buy a proper table. How will everyone die? It keeps me up at night. But you won't have to know. That is the burden that I bear. It's okay, Stargazer. It's okay. Don't worry. We'll be safe. I'll never buy a proper table. We'll be safe. We'll be safe. But yeah, I mean, get prepared to join me next week. Ooh, spoilers. And for any other goodies that I can pry from the cold, not-dead hands of scalpers on Master Replicas, and just ignore all the other collectors who want to get these limited items. <laughs> and I forgot how the start of that sentence was, so I can't end it properly. But anyways, I hope you and Oh god, th this outro has a format, doesn't it? I did not look up that format. Uh... Quick! Reliant! Distract them! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!